Hi folks, welcome to Set Apart Homestead. This is Travis here at the Prepared Homestead. Today we're gonna to talk about security at your homestead or securing it. And some of you may not be homesteading. Uh, you may still live in the city. Uh, maybe you don't have a, a place that you're going to live at to, to ride through the rough times. Maybe you have a bug out uh, place. Either way, regardless of whether you're living in the city or in the country, I think a lot of the things that I want to talk about uh, will, you know, pertain to your situation. So even though it's homestead security, um, that can just be wherever you're at. So stay tuned. Uh, by the way, while we're talking, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I would sure appreciate it. Uh, and if you really like the video, you could share it. Uh, with someone you know or on whatever social media you might use. All right, homestead security uh, is very, very important. Uh, it always has been important, but with the way the world is changing so rapidly, it is even more important than ever before. Uh, so your focus on when you're, you're preparing your prepping plan or maybe your homestead lifestyle, um, maybe it's food, food production, uh, a big garden, raising animals, um, uh, building the right house. Maybe uh, your focus in prepping is food storage, medicine, first aid, uh, you know, developing skills with that. Um, but and then also your you know a lot of preppers and homesteaders you know they they target shoot they they practice some skills and stuff in case things got really bad um, and they had to defend themselves. That is all good, uh, and I don't want to knock any of it. But there are things that you need to be doing right now. Uh, don't wait until that threat comes to you uh, to get ready. Uh, to, to actually do something uh, when it comes to securing your homestead. You need to be thinking homestead security at a high priority already uh, and doing the things now because even in normal good times, uh, there is always a potential that someone could come onto your property or into your home uh, and do you some harm, steal from you, uh, and hurt your family or hurt your livestock. And that, that's true anywhere. And of course, there are certainly areas of this country that are much more dangerous than others, and we know about that. But even out here, I mean, we're really isolated from the rest of the world, and we live in a, a very low populated county that has uh, very minimal crime. Uh, so in a lot of ways, it's, it's just a whole different world than it is for most people in America that live in big cities. But um, there are still the occasional crime that happens. Uh, you know, maybe it's some uh, person strung out on drugs and they're driving around looking for something to easily steal so that they can sell for their next fix. Um, so there, there are always uh, potential problems and dangers that we have to uh, be aware of. And that's just in normal good times. Well, the world that we live in today, uh, it's even more critical to put a, a very high focus and a high priority on securing the property that you're at and securing your home and, and setting up systems uh, to to make that all happen uh, again you know here we are living way out in the sticks uh, and you might say oh well, we're, we're miles and miles we're hours away from the nearest you know riots that's going on and we are we're many hours from from any near riot um, but they can still happen. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I think it was, uh, a small town about 45 minutes from here, a group of Black Lives Matter and Antifa showed up, or they were threatening to show up, uh, and, and protest in this little small town. And thankfully, the town pulled together, and they showed up uh, well-armed, and they met the, the people, we'll use that politically correct term, at the, the city limits, and some of them were arrested because of drug possession and then the rest were turned away uh, and then I read just the other day a group showed up at a small town in Arkansas and they pretty much received the same uh, welcoming but uh, could they show up in your area uh, could they uh, run around in the county and vandalize uh, is there 
you know, people that might support that ideology, that Marxist, communist, violent, anarchist ideology that lives in your county. It's always possible. You may live in a very conservative Republican county, but, you know, there's certainly some one that has some teenage kid or whatever that just hates the world and is hell-bent on doing harm. Uh, there's also the threat of uh, you know, food shortages and, and things that we've already started to see. And as they get worse, uh, your good, wholesome, uh, trustworthy neighbors could turn on you. I mean, we all hate to think of that. Uh, but it is certainly a possibility because when you're starving and you're hungry and you're you're sick and your children are crying that they're hungry and you know the guy down the, the road is some kind of a prepper, uh, he probably has a whole lot. And they've got a big garden and all those animals, uh, you know, that's not fair. He should give us some of it. Uh, you know, there's always that threat. So anyways, I know a lot of people don't agree with this, uh, especially preppers, because they're just one more thing you have to prep for. There's one more uh, life that you have to prepare and, and have supplies for. But out here in the country, um, good dogs are really important. Uh, I was told once by an, an old man that had lived his whole life on a farm, uh, was actually, you know, lived on the farm that he was born on, and he told me that his father told him uh, that one of the most important things that you can get you on a farm is a couple of really good dogs. Uh, not just for hunting, and you can have hunting dogs, but dogs to prepare, protect your property. Uh, they protect your animals. If you have livestock, if you have chickens, uh, you know, whatever uh, livestock that you have to produce food, good dogs will protect them. Uh, dogs also are really good at alerting you uh, when there's a predator, whether it's a, you know, wild four-legged predator or the more domesticated two-legged predator. Dogs are really good at alerting you. Uh, they can hear better, see better, smell better uh, than you can. And, uh, you know, some dogs will engage in a threat, and not, but not all dogs do. But most dogs, uh, at least good farm dogs, should at least bark to let you know. And, and the dogs that we have do that. We have Pyrenees, uh, and then we also have a kind of a Beagle Lab Mix Mutt. I don't know, <laughs> we don't really know what he is, but he's a really good dog. Uh, and uh, he's good at, at alerting us uh, to you know, someone being on the property, and he also is good at chasing rabbits. Um, but the, the Pyrenees are excellent. They stay out with the livestock, and I, I, I never have to worry about them um, because, uh, you know, any movement out there, they're right on top of it. So dogs are really good. Another thing that is very important, and that's in developing your property. <clears throat> And what I mean by that is just the placement of everything. Now, if you move on a piece of property that there's already a house built and there's already a barn built, and that's how you're going to go with it, that's one thing. But if you have the you know choice or if you build on your property, make sure you structure it where you're placing the home and the barn and everything in an area and in a way that it's easily defensible. Um, is it from the highest vantage point in the in the property? Is it a low uh, part of the property? Uh, do you have a you know what's you know can be a term can be used in the military as a killing range, which means you know is your property so surrounded by uh, you know tall grasses and brush you know like this stuff here and behind me. Um, you don't want this kind of stuff so close to your house that someone could sneak up on you or that a predator can get really close. So. Um, I keep, you know, I, I allow, if you guys can look, some of this stuff uh, behind me here is chest high, some of it's even head high, and I allow certain areas of the property to grow wild like that, and I do that because I'm an herbalist, and there's, and this actual part of the property right behind me has some really good herbs, uh, wild plants that I like to harvest, um, and it's good for the environment. Um, so I allow certain patches, but places close to the barn, to the house, to the animals, I keep it mowed back good uh, so that it's more difficult for predators or people to sneak up on them. And, and if you need to engage uh, whatever that predator is, you have some space between you and that predator. Uh, so 
uh, placement of that. Uh, you know, trees, shrubs uh, that they could use as cover coming to you and you wouldn't know they're there until it's too late. Uh, so be careful of that kind of stuff. Perimeter security. Um, we, you know, right now we are currently working on fencing in the entire perimeter of the property and that's not cheap and easy to do when you have several, you know, acres. Um, about half of the property uh, perimeter is fenced and so we're working on the rest of it. You know, if you have a city lot, of course that's kind of easy, but when you have, you know, several acres, it takes a while. But that is something that you can do, and if you can't afford uh, fencing, you could use a uh, certain type of plants to grow up. Now, of course, having a fence or having plants is not going to keep people out necessarily, but it can slow them down. It, they can, it uh, creates a barrier where, where if they're trying to jump the fence or cut through the fence or get through the brush, it's slowing them down. It's going to create a little bit more noise uh, and things like your good dogs are going to hear that and uh, you know, alert you uh, to something happening in the fence row. Uh, and then it also keeps out just the, the unwanted people. They're maybe not hardened criminals, but they're just kind of wandering around on your property. And, and a fence will keep out a lot of those kind of people. Uh, lighting is another good thing to think of. We use a lot of those uh, solar lights. I mean, we have a, um, a big mercury vapor light uh, on the property, but we also have uh, the solar LED lights uh, strategically placed on buildings and on poles uh, on the property, and we are expanding constantly. We have uh, plans to put in a few more. Um, they are relatively cheap. Uh, the price of these uh, solar powered LED lights have gone down considerably and the quality of them have has gone up quite a bit. Um, I have some solar powered uh, motion sensor uh, LED lights uh, that put out between five and eight hundred lumens which is quite you know it does quite a bit for spotlight uh, and I think we paid like twenty five twenty eight dollars a piece for them. Uh, you can even get solar powered um, lights that are nearly equivalent to the big street lights or the you know the big mercury vapor type lights that you have on a farm. Uh, so that type of technology has advanced enough to make it quite reasonable to buy several of those um, and have them placed. Another thing to think of, and this is more specifically if you live in out like we do, is securing buildings, securing your fence, securing coops. A lot of times farmers, you know, I mean, I grew up on farms and you don't think about locking up your chicken coop or putting a lock on your fence, uh, you know, gate, uh, or putting a lock on a shed or a barn because you're out here in the country and it's on your property. But more and more uh, we are hearing and reading about it, getting reports from people we know that someone has come on their property and they've stole their chickens out of their chicken coop. Uh, or they're stealing their livestock or they're stealing their tools um, and as things get worse uh, as money gets harder to come by with all the people on unemployment not working um, you know if things continue to 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 go downhill there's going to be more and more hunger and you know finding out that you've got some chickens that's that's pretty valuable um, or you know a shed full of tools or something like that so uh, creating a lock be, being able to lock those up uh, is pretty good. You know, the chick, our big chicken coop that I built, in a way, I guess you could say I overbuilt it for chickens, but I wanted it to be secure from predators. I didn't want to really have to worry about, you know, a raccoon getting in it because they're some of the worst. So this thing is quite solid. I mean, it's built almost to the standards of a house, uh, and it also has a steel house door on it with a a uh, doorknob and a deadbolt uh, in a door frame so it would um, it would be pretty much like breaking into your house to get into my chicken coop and it really it only cost me I think when I figured it up at the end I spent probably about 200 to 250 dollars more uh, than I would have if I built something the same size uh, at a basic chicken coop standard quality, you know what I'm saying, the kind of quality that you would see at a, you know, a farm store that sells these little chicken coops. So I built it quite solid. 
Uh, and I think something like, I think that's a good decision. So uh, think about that kind of stuff and how to secure your animals. Um, now, now the big one that everyone's always waiting for when we talk about homestead, sets, homestead security, goodness. Get it out, Travis. And that is firearms and training. It's good to have firearms, but if you're not practicing with them on a regular basis, I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, but you need to practice. So here's some things. Not everyone is fortunate, you know, like myself and other people that you might know that has a military law enforcement background that's had professional training. Um, but you can get professional training pretty easily. There's a lot of people around the country that professionally train you how to shoot. Uh, if you cannot afford that, there are videos online. YouTube is full of shooting videos and tactical uh, techniques and stuff like that. Is it as good as going to a school, going through professional training, uh, being in the military, being in law enforcement? No, it's not as good, but it's certainly better than nothing. So I would encourage you to to watch these videos uh, to find a place where you can practice. If you're not living out like this where you can just shoot whenever you want, uh, find a shooting range. Um, I'm not going to go into like what kind of guns to have because uh, anything is better than nothing, okay? Uh, what you're comfortable shooting, what you can be confident in shooting, what works well for you is better than nothing. Um, I am not one of these guys that if you don't have this particular, you know, weapon, if you don't have this particular caliber, uh, you know, you suck. That's just not me. Um, I understand there's uh, benefits to having the same weapon that everyone else has, uh, that the military uses and all that. But uh, if this just does, if that doesn't work for you, if something works better, then go with it. Um, you need to train your family. Uh, we regularly shoot around here. Um, uh, even the younger kids, um, you know, they, they partake in that. We do drills on uh, where to go, what to do, uh, if there's, you know, a tornado, if there was a fire, if there was an animal predator on the property, if there was a two-legged, you know, threat, uh, you know, anything like that. Uh, we also, or I mostly, uh, do perimeter security at night. Now, it doesn't mean I'm up all night. That's why I have dogs. Uh, but at night, I check things uh, before I go to bed, make sure everything's secure, and, uh, you know, kind of do a little patrol around the place. This kind of stuff does not hurt to do. Uh, in doing that, I've actually caught, uh, just in the last couple of months, three or four predator animals uh, trying to get into the coop. Of course, they I don't think they would have succeeded, but I did catch them uh, and dispatched them. <laughs> Because my chickens run free during the day, and I don't want them getting used to coming around here and catching them while they're, you know, out running around during the day. Um, but the point is, is I would not have caught that if I hadn't gone out at night and done some patrolling. So make sure you have uh, the proper tools to do that. A good firearm and a good flashlight is really the, the, the best thing that you need. Uh, now, if you've got a lot of property, you might want more, but, you know, I can walk my property in, in not too many minutes of time and I feel comfortable with what I have. Um, but focusing on homestead security is, is really, really important. Um, in your family, your family needs to be aware of it. You know, I carry pretty much 24 hours a day. I mean, <laughs> not literally, I'm not carrying it in my sleep, but it is right next to me in my sleep. And when I, I am awake, it is on me. Uh, and if you're in an area where you can legally do that, then I encourage you to do so. And thankfully, in the great state of Missouri, I can carry this just about wherever I want to. And uh, I encourage you to do that because um, we are living in a more dangerous world than we were six months ago or 12 months ago. And it's only going to get worse. Uh, so you need to do take the precautions that you can do on your property to protect your home, your livelihood, your food, uh, your animals, and most importantly, your family, your children, your wife, your husband. Um, it, it is very important. And just because you're maybe older or out of shape or 
you've never handled a gun or any or you have no kind of military law enforcement background does not mean that you just give up and figure you can't do it you can learn uh, you can talk to people uh, I'll answer the questions that I would I'm able to answer uh, if you ask but don't just give up uh, just because you don't know because it is imperative uh, that you you know have certain tactics that you use on your homestead and certain equipment uh, and a plan to keep your homestead safe from predators, invasion, uh, and whatever it is that you might face. Alright folks, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.